Good afternoon everyone. This is the video recorded presentation of Group 9, Modern and Contemporary Art. The reporters are Macrolan Cacho, Marlon Bart Cambiado, Romulo Calmateo, Laila Langit, and Michelle Arcalindao. Contemporary Art Movements these are the chronological list of postmodernist styles and art forms, and some of these art movements are going to be discussed by the assigned reporter, such as neo pop art, photorealism, conceptualism, and performance art. Neo pop art. Neo pop, also known as post pop, is a broad term that refers to a style influenced by pop art as a reaction to the minimalism and conceptualism of the 1970s. The first wave of neo-pop art emerged in the 1980s. The Resurgence of Pop Art Neo-pop art, defined as a revival of the aesthetics and concepts of the mid-20th century movement, capturing pop art's qualities such as intentional kitsch and a commercialism interest. What we call neo-pop art is certainly not a movement, but a convenient way of classifying this new list of diverse artists. The work of these artists also draws inspiration from conceptual art, photorealism, installation, performance art, and more. The original pop art movement was boundary-breaking and avant-garde, whereas neo-pop art is not a new style, but a dramatic and controversial evolution of the previous generation. It could also be called shock pop art. The most prominent feature throughout neo-pop artworks is the use of imagery from popular culture. Branded or commercial symbolism is an important theme in neo-pop art. Incorporating logos or impersonal imagery reinforced the idea that art could be inspired by anything and everything, not just history, mythology, or morality. The neo-pop art movement intended to blur the lines between high art and low culture by painting or sculpting images of popular culture objects and celebrities. One of the most significant qualities of neo-pop art is the idea that there is no hierarchy of culture and that art can take from any source. Another feature of this generation is the psychological evaluations that are frequently integrated in the work. Neo-pop artists Charles Ray and Jeff Koons, on the other hand, succeed in concealing their goals while Damien Hirst and Katharina Fritsch make their intentions clear. Hirst employs distressing subject matter and pessimistic titles, whereas Fritsch creates sculptures that elicit worry and fear. Old pop art was not particularly thought-provoking, and it supported nihilism, capitalism, and consumer culture, whereas neo-pop art has evolved with a menacing tone that sharply condemns our fears and obsessions. Characteristics of Neo-Pop Art Bright Colors Bold colors, especially the main colors of red, blue, and yellow, are frequently used in Neo-Pop Art. The colors were typically vibrant. These colors did not reflect the artist's inner world or self, as they had in previous traditional art forms, but rather mirrored the bright, popular culture around them. Irony or Satire Neo-pop art tends to criticize and evaluate Western culture, values, relationships, and interaction, frequently poking fun at celebrities and openly embraces ideas that are provocative and controversial. One of the most important elements of pop art was humor. The subject matter is used by artists to make a statement about current events, mock fads, and question the status quo. Innovative Techniques Neo-pop art creators emulated mass media sources such as televisions, magazines, and comic strips. They often incorporated magazine cutouts, mimic comic strip, and featured famous people and products sometimes combining different mass media elements into one design. Everyday objects from everyday life were incorporated into well-known pop art pieces, typically with satirical twists. Pop art designers were able to elevate everyday objects to high art level while drawing on popular cultural motifs, from road signs and hamburgers to light bulbs and bananas. 
One approach used by painters to emphasize everyday objects was enlarging images to enormous scales and repeating them from rows upon rows. This gave the scene a dramatic atmosphere and made a bold message about consuming. Another neo-pop art technique was to remove an object from its context as a standalone piece or combine it with other objects or images in line with the themes of capitalism, materialism, and fame. Printmaking allowed neo-pop art artists to replicate and duplicate their artwork, challenging the idea that art should be rare or one of a kind. This repetition and mass production was one of the most significant themes within the neo-pop art movement. Mixed Media and Collage Collage was one of the first techniques used by pop art artists and still used by neo-pop artists. Although collage on its own is not a painting technique, it was used in conjunction with other painting techniques on a single canvas or surface. The technique involved the layering of images cut or ripped from advertisements, magazines, and newspaper onto a canvas or other surface. Mixed media techniques are similar to collage and can include some collage that use multiple techniques. However, mixed media techniques can also expand to the use of three-dimensional or other objects. Neo-pop artists favored the use of blended materials and didn't limit themselves to traditional painting materials. Instead, they chose to utilize a wide variety of media including found items or even created elements of sculpture within a painting. They combined seemingly disparate images or objects and placed them on a single canvas to create a new narrative form. Other mixed media artists removed the need of traditional canvas and use wood planks, sheet metal, and other objects as their backgrounds. Neo-pop art paintings Mona Lisa and other 34 masterpieces repainted in oil on canvas and added a little shelf painted as if it had sprouted directly from the image. Kunz has placed a giant blue glass bubble or gazing bowl. Kunz said that the gazing bowl represents the vastness of the universe and at the same time the intimacy of right here right now. The viewer sees himself reflected in the shiny surface as well as the famous image. It is our experience, desire, interest, participation, and our relationship with the image, Kuhn said. Neo-pop art sculpture Katarina Fritsch carved a ring of life-size rat as the rat king. Each rat stands 8 feet tall on its hind legs. They cautiously lift their small front paws in suspicious guard facing outwards. The tangling of each rat's tail create a knotted shape inside their circle. Man's fear and apprehensions of this creature derives from their participation in the spread of a bonic plague, which killed thousands of Europeans in the 14th century. Fritz's sculptures scales work in her paper by giving the audience an unexpected abrupt surprise reinforcing the same terror and continuing concern of this creature. Other Neo-Pop Artwork Poppy by Jeff Koons, 1992 Twins by Yasumasa Murimura, 1988 Sleeping Girl, Yayoi Kusama, 1988 Red Balloon Dog by Jeff Koons, 1995 And Monument to Pro-Life, The Birth of Sean Preston Daniel Edwards, 2006. Okay, let's proceed na po sa photorealism. Photorealism is an art movement that involves replicating the original photo image into a painting or a sculpture. Photorealism is an artwork so realistic that the boundaries between reality and imagination blur. The results will make a viewer do a double take, leading them to believe that an artist has created a photo using raw materials. So, kumbaga po, ang photorealism ay isang art, painting or sculpture na nagde-depict ng itsura ng mga tunay na tao or object man na exact details compared sa ginayahan nito. Parang nasa isang photograph lang o parang replica lang kung titingnan. The origin of photorealism. Photorealism, also called superrealism, American art movement that began in the 1960s taking photography as its inspiration. 
the word photorealism was coined by Louis K. Meisel in 1969 and appeared in print for the first time in 1970 in a Whitney Museum catalog for the show 22 Realist. It is also sometimes labeled as Super Realism, New Realism, Sharp Focus Realism, or Hyper Realism. Ang photorealism din po ay nag-emerge in the late 1960s. Tapos na buo rin po pala or na-influence ang idea ng photorealism dahil sa pop art and min- minimalist movements na nauna dito. Photorealism Artist Chuck Close Chuck Close is well-known photorealistic artist who makes his artwork on an en- enormous scale. Though, though Close often uses close shot photographs in his work many of his pieces are painted or drawn big self portrait is acrylic on canvas si Chuck Close po ay isa rin sa kilalang American painter visual artist and photographer na isa rin sa unang nag attempt ng replication ng photographic imagery tas kaya po nasabing massive scale photorealist siya kasi hindi pangkaraniwan yung laki ng mga artworks niya na ano, umaabot minsan ng 9 feet. Tapos ang mga artwork niya po, usually self-portrait or portrait ng ibang tao. Miguel Angel Nunez An artist from Uruguay has created an impressive array of photorealistic art using oil on wood or canvas. The subjects of his talents are usually food and drink, food or drink, and they are so realistic they make your mouth water. Also, si Botellas con vaso azul, which contains water, plastic, and paper, all with incredibly realistic textures. Si Miguel Angel Nunez naman po ay isang hyperrealistic painter. Ang ginagawa niyang photorealistic art ay usually po food or drinks, portraits. Masyado rin pong realistic yung gawa niya kaya kaya nasabing kaya kang paglawain kahit tinitingnan mo lang yung paintings kasi detailed rin po at sobrang mukhang totoo. Shown here po are some of his works. Gerhard Richter is a German visual artist Rich, Richter has produced abstract as well as photorealistic paintings as also photographs and glass pieces. He is widely regarded as one of the most important contemporary German artists and several of his works are set record prices at auction. So the following po are some other examples of photorealism. Next art movement is conceptual art or conceptualism. So what is conceptual art? Conceptual art emerged as an art movement in the 1960s, critiquing the previously ruling modernist movement and its focus on the aesthetic. Also, conceptualism refers to the Anglo-American art movement. This term usually refers to art made from the mid-1960s to the mid 1970s. Furthermore, conceptual art is art for which the idea or concept behind the work is more important than the finished art object. Ibig sabihin, sa conceptual art, mas mahalaga ang idea or konsepto ng mismong artwork kaysa sa finished art object. In conceptualism, art is used whichever materials and form were most appropriate to get your ideas across. Sinasabi dito na gumagamit ang mga conceptual artists ng kahit anumang materiales or forms na sa tingin nila is naaangkop upang mas maiparating ang kanilang mga idea. And this resulted in vastly different types of artworks that could look like almost anything from performance to writing to everyday objects. Additionally, in conceptualism, the artist explored the possibilities of art as idea and art as knowledge. 
using linguistic ma mathematical and process-oriented dimension of thought as well as invisible system structures and process for their art. Next is the origin of conceptual art. Although conceptual art was first defined in the 1960s, its origin traced back to 1917, when Marcel Duchamp famously bought a urinal from a plumber shop and submit, submitted it as a sculpture in an open sculpture exhibition in New York, for which he was on the selection committee. Pero, the jury or yung mga hurado rejected the work ni Marcel. Sinasabi na immoral daw or naniniwala sila na immoral yung artwork ni Marcel. And they refused to accept it as an art. So, the champ's questioning of where the boundaries of art lie and his critique of the art establishment paved the way for the conceptual art. Next is, who is the father of conceptual art? Marcel Duchamp is often known to be the forefather of conceptual art. He is best known for his ready-made works like Fountain, the famous journal that he designated as art in 1970s, and that is seen as the first conceptual artwork in art history. So makikita nyo dito sa right side yung picture or yung itsura ni Marcel Duchamp. And next to it is the fountain na sinasabi ngang first conceptual artwork in art history. Core characteristics of conceptualism. Conceptual art is all about ideas and meanings rather than work of arts such as paintings, sculptures, and other valuable objects. It is characterized by its use of text as well as imagery along with a variety of ephemeral, typically everyday materials and found objects. Hindi kagaya ng sa potorealism na more on realistic artwork because in potorealism, it involves replicating the original photo into a painting or sculpture while on a conceptual art, it's more about using text, imagery, or ephemeral to convey the ideas of a artist. Also, in conceptual art, it typically incorporates photography and video, as well as other contemporary media such as computers, performance art, projections, installation art, and sound. One might say that this conceptual art was an artistic revolt against the increasing commodification of art and or the creative limitation imposed by the modern art taught in traditionalist venues. Next is famous artists and their conceptual art. First is Joseph Cassatt. Joseph Cassatt is an American artist and theoretician a founder and leading figure of the conceptual art movement. He lives in New York and London after being resided in various cities in Europe, including Gent and Rome. Cossett attended the Toledo Museum School of Design and the Cleveland Art Institute. So, ito nga si Joseph Cossett is tinaguriang bilang founder and leading figure ng conceptual art movement. One of the famous artwork of Cosset is One and Three Chairs in 1965. As we can see in his artwork, Cosset presents a photograph of a chair, a physical chair, and a, di a dictionary definition of a chair and as which is the real chair. The physical chair could be considered a reproduction of the definition, as is the photograph a reproduction of the physical chair. The same is true of art an art object being merely a manifestation of the idea of art. Also, Cosset rebelled against traditional categories of painting and sculpture because naniniwala siya na art can be expressed as an idea without a physical execution of that idea. Next famous artist is Solowet. Solowet was an iconic American artist whose work helped to establish both minimalism and conceptual art. Lewet's 
practice was based primarily within his own intellect, establishing a rubric of formal instruction which his assistant followed to create the works. One of his famous conceptual art is Red Square White Letters in 1962. As we can see in his artwork, Solowet felt that color distracted from the idea of art by drawing attention to art's mere physical properties. In this piece, he subverts the tendency by placing the names of colors on the piece, rather than merely responding to our perception of the color red and white. We are forced to think about our perception of red and white and how they are delimited by language. According to him, in conceptual art, the idea or concept is the most important aspect of the work. All of the planning and decisions are made beforehand and the execution is a perfunctory affair. Next is Seldo Morales, a leading conceptual artist. Seldo Campos Morales' practice is situated between the Brazilian neo-concrete movement, which advocated greater sensuality and color in art and a more conceptually based approach. One of his famous conceptual art is Insertion into Ideological Circuits, Coca-Cola Project in 1970. As you can see in his artwork, using a combination of England and Portuguese, Morales added to Coca-Cola bottles his own text, including cocktail instruction and political statements such as Yankees Go Home, returning the bottles into general circulation. Morales thus added his voice to the constant exchange of consumer goods and defined the strict state censorship of his native Brazil. Other famous conceptual art are Artist Breath by Piero Manzoni, Casserole and Close Muscle by Marcel Bruthers, and 18th of February 1973 by On. Kawara. Also, Measurement Room by Mel Bochner, an untitled selection from Tourism, Inflammatory Essay, The Living Series, The Survival Series, Under a Rock, Lament and Child by Jenny Holzer, and All the Things I Know But of Which I Am Not at the Moment Thinking, 1969 by Robert Barry, are some of the examples of conceptual Let's move on to the last topic. I am Leila and I will be presenting the performance art. Performance art with its denotative meaning. It is a noun, an art form that combines visual art and dramatic performance. So to further discuss the meaning of performance art. So we have here performance art in which the medium is the artist's own body. So meaning yung mismong artista or yung nagpe-perform, yung, yun yung body niya mismo yung ginagamit niya. And that the actions he or she is making is considered an art. And that's also include, included in the, in the art itself. So performance art could not be sold uh, bought or treated as a commission. However, it can be uh, they ha they have the right to ask for admission tickets and uh, uh, intellectual rights fees. So, so performance art may be compromised of painting, uh, sculpture, dialogue, poetry, music, dance, film. Uh, footage and laser lights, animals, fire, and etc. So, performance arts is a very vast type of art uh, genre, and it also ha has a various uh, theme such as entertainment, amusement. Uh, it its goal is to primarily arouse the feeling, this uh, to give strong, uh, memorable. Uh, feeling and emotions to its audience. So, next. So, in here, performance art and 
in performance art, the artists see the movement as a uh, means or opportunity to take their art directly to the public forum, to the masses. So, direct na nilang nadideliver yung gusto nilang ipahiwatik or gusto nilang iperform sa mga audience na available na present at that time or at that in that place uh, and thus, they eliminate the needs for the uh, specific or grand grand places like such as galleries, uh, people, agents, brokers, uh, tax accountants, and other aspects of capitalism. So, the goal here is to provide the art at the minimum cost to to the audience directly. So, yun yung goal talaga ng performance art. So, let's move on to the characteristics of performance art. So, we have here four char characteristics. The first one is the artistic movement. So, he, in here, performance art is considered a legitimate artistic movement. So, when we say legitimate artistic movement or art, it is when uh, considered legitimate art when the art of work has been created with the style, the materials, the production methods that are essentials, essential elements of his genre. So, we consider it authentic. So, the next one is... Performance art is live. So when we say performance art, it should be live or uh, real time. It's like the Facebook live. So the live selling. So we, when the artist is performing, uh, it should be at at exactly at a real time. So that's a important characteristic. And the next one is is that performance art has no rules or guidelines. So, in here, it means that it is an art. Performance art because the artist says it is an art. So, here, we can consider the uh, performance art as a very experimental. So, what whatever comes out or whatever the action of the performers during that actual live performance that is considered art. The next and the last one is is that performance art is not for sale. This is very important and it may vary depending on the artist and in here it it may be however the performance art the performance or the service may may however sell admission tickets and film film rights. So they have the right to ask for fees, possibly for some, for some fees that you know they needed fund for, uh, for exchange for the materials, you know, something like that. So, moving along, let's go over the origins of performance art. So, performance art, as we all know, is a form of expression that was born born as an alternative artistic manifestation we mean here uh let's go let's understand that uh performance art emerged in 1930 parallel to dadaism so and uh, dadaism is under the umbrella of the conceptual art and that and that movement was led by tristan zara uh, one of the pioneers of dada so western Culture theorists have set the origins of performance art in the beginnings of the 20th, 20th century. So, kasabay nito yung mga concept tulad ng constructivism, futurism, and dadaism, which we, which was discussed during our class. Dada, dada was an important inspiration because their poetry actions, which drifted up, apart from conventionalisms and future artists, especially the some members of Russian futurisms could be identified as part of the starting process of performance art. So, the discipline emerged in 1916 and that is parallel to the Dadaism. So, next slide.
So now, to give you a very specific and accurate and relevant timeline, so I'm going to discuss starting from 1960s in a very brief manner. So the 1960, we have here the happenings. So what do we mean by happenings? According to Alan Capro, happenings, quote unquote, are events that put simply or happen. Happening is a new art form in, at the beginning of 1960s. So, a happening, yun yung tawag mismo, allows the artist to experiment with the body motion, recorded sounds, written and spoken text, and smells. Sometimes, the audience members even become the performers. So, you know the flash mobs or the step up movie? It's, the, it's pretty, much, pretty much similar with the happenings, the the art form that which existed in 1960s so in here 1960s one of the earliest happenings artworks was alan Capro's happening in the new york scene written in 1961 as a form as the form was developing so so alan Capro, you can search that he is a very famous uh, originator ng happenings and the other art and the other artists who created happenings include um take note jim dine plays all Aldenberg, robert whitman and wolf whitman so the work of performance artists after 1968 often showed influences of cultural cultural and political events of that year so no mga panahon ng 1960s they this happening or the artists are very much engaged or focusing on the cultural and political events sa kanilang place the time. So, in here, pretty much similar sa Pilipinas rin na during this time of election, there are many happenings, no happenings, uh, performance like those in the Sambuanga when Lenny Robredo attended the performance i we can say that that's a li live also we say we can we that's the performance art that in which you know live and all the fit fits the criteria of performance art and can be also uh under some cultural and political influence so yeah some i'll give you some example of the artists under this era, so Barbara Smith with Ritual Mill in 1969 was a forefront of feminist body art, among others, including Carol Lee, Skiman, and jo Joanne Jonas. So, active din talaga yung mga cultural and political uh, issues in naangkop nila sa performance art, lalo na yung topic na feminism. So, let's move to 1970s. In here, we have artists whose work already before tended to be a performance art as well as new artists at the beginning of 1970s began to present performance art in a stricter form. So we mean here, new artists with radical piece in performance were with the 1971 performance. Which, yeah, something like that. This, this artist I am pertaining to shoot shoot the title the the performance in performance shoot Chris that the artist was Chris Burden so that happened in 1971 I can put here the uh, some images but you can imagine that Chris Burden was shot in his left arm by an assistant from the distance of about 5 meters and Vito can see in the same year with seedbed. So, masyadong strict. But that's, you know, part of the performance art. Something like that. That's part of the art itself. So, you'll understand. Because that's, that's how it should happen. It's the performance, it's the art itself. So, now we have, by the end of 19, uh, 1970s, 1974, to test the limit, uh, it 
quote unquote, test the limits of the relationship between performer and audience. So we have Marina Avramovic developed one of her most challenging performances entitled Rhythm Zero. So she in that story, in that in that scene, she placed a, upon a, she she placed upon a table seventy two objects that people people were allowed to use in any way they choose. She could give pleasure, others could inflict pain. For six hours she is allowed she allowed the audience members to manipulate her body. Quote and quote again, according to Marina, what I learned was that if you leave it up to the audience, they can kill you. I felt really violated. They cut up my clothes, stuck crows, turns in my stomach. One person aimed the gun at my head. The other took it away. After exactly... Six hours, as planned, I stood up and started walking toward the audience. Everyone ran away to escape an actual confrontation. So that is the, you know, streaker form in the 1970s. Now, let's move to 1980s, mass culture. It's very understandable, mass culture. In this year, 1980s, by the end of 1980s, performance art had become so widely known. So, mass culture had come to supply both structure and subject matter for such performance art. So, naging super uh, rampant na yung performance art everywhere that it has become crossover artists that crossover artists uh, artists in mainstream entertainment. Several, um, I mean, several performance artists had indeed became crossover, crossover artists in the mainstream entertainment. For example, uh, Linda Montano and Tic Chessie. They spent a whole year in New York City tied to each other with a piece of rope. Yeah, that's it. 1980s. Performance art. And among the per per performance discussed in the art world of this decade was performance by Linda Montano. In they put a title it's, uh, like One Year Performance, Rope Piece. And Karen Finlay's I Am Asman in 1987. That Asman, I Am Asman piece is that imagines what is going through a rapist man. So, let's move on to 1990s. In the 1990s, performance art as a performance art as an complete art form game admit, gained admittance into the art museums. So, it has become very formal and things and like that that it which uh, it should be placed in, it gained attraction, it was featured in art museums. So, pretty much, uh, they enclosed, they, they put it inside the museum to, uh, to capitalize, I don't know, I, it's pretty much like that. They, it's not sold, but, they put it in a place na secure, I mean, put it in a place na convenient for the audience. So, that's the explanation, I think. Young artists from all over the world, former Eastern Bloc, turned to performance. Performance art at, the, at about the same time appeared in Cuba, Caribbean, and China. So, it's worldwide sensation that this genre reach different parts of the world so next is slide so i may be taking it so long and very specific dadalian ko na lang yung 2000s and up, up to the present so 2000s from may may to 14 to may 31 2000 museum of modern art or m o m a's history 
held a major retrospective and performance creation of Marina Abramovic's work. So, yung na-mention ko kanina na she let her, the artist na, na inalaw niya yung mga tao to first, to give anything to, do anything to her body. Yan. Na, napunta na siya sa museum in this year. So, malaki yung impact nitong performance ni Marina. That's why it's it's been put in a exhibition. So, the performance was entitled The Artist is Present. It was a 736-hour and 30-minute static silent piece. So, you know, when di sila gumagalaw, nakatayo lang sila. In which she sat, she, the performer, sat immobile in the museum's atrium. While spectators were invited to take turns sitting opposite to her. Nakaupo lang siya and the audience, they exchange. Papalit-palitan sila to makaharap, para makaharap si Marina. But not the real Marina, it's a performer na. Iba ng iba, ibang tao na siya. Performer is old enough to do the performance, the exhibition. So, a group support for the sitter. Uh, the audience are called sitters. And sitting with Marina. They is they made a during the ex, the run of the exhibition. Marina Abramovic performed the artist is present. Oh yeah. She just sat there. Ah, really? Ah, uh, yes, Marina Amobrik performed the artist is present. So that's correction. She really performed. She really performed at New York's Museum of Modern Art. And up to the present, 19, 2010, and up to the present, we have diff madami nang nag-arise na art, performance art and that is very you uh, very vast lalo na sa paglaganap ng internet and pagusbong ng COVID-19 so for the references I will be attaching it at the end of the slide thank you very much for listening to our group thank you thank you ma'am thank you classmates